it's finally here! The holy grail for any knife geek. Sharpening on a stone. The stone I use is a king stone that has a coarse 1000 grit side and a smooth 6000 grit side. If you are new to stone sharpening and not sure whether you'll stick to it or not, this stone is perfect because it sells for about $30. The only downside is that it doesn't seem to be packaged particularly well and mine arrived with some corners banged up. From reading Amazon reviews, this seems to be a common problem, but it doesn't affect the stone's performance since the corners are not used. Before sharpening, soak the stone in cold water for 3 to 5 minutes, submerging the coarse side completely and making the fine side wet but not submerged. The biggest stumbling block for most people when they learn to sharpen on a stone is the angle. I've heard all sorts of tips and tricks on how to maintain the angle, like put two pennies under your knife. Well, that's kind of silly because it really depends on how wide the blade of your knife is, whether the two pennies will work or the three pennies will work. I take all the guesswork out of it by using the Wedgeck guides. Their package comes with all the angles from 10 to 20 and you choose the appropriate one for your knife. My missing knives are 15 degrees, so that's the guide that I use. If you are sharpening European knives like Worcester, Victorinox, etc., 18 to 20 degrees works well. Keep in mind that some Japanese knives are not symmetrical. In other words, they have a steeper angle on one side than on the other, so you might need to ask the manufacturer what angle they want you to use for each side. To keep the stone stable, place it on a damp paper towel, just like stabilizing a cutting board. Keep a spray bottle or a bowl of water nearby to re-wet the stone as it dries out. I find that sharpening is a lot easier to learn on little knives than on big knives, so let's first do a paring knife and then we'll do a chef's knife. Position your knife diagonally on the stone with the cutting edge toward you and the tip of the knife away from you. Place the angle guide underneath and bring the edge in contact with the stone. Place your fingertips on the edge and try to remember what this feels like. Remove the guide, but try not to lose the angle. Periodically check your angle during sharpening and adjust. After you do this for a while, you'll develop intuition for what 15 degrees feels like. Here is what the edge of a knife looks like after repeated use. In the first step of sharpening, we'll remove all this metal to create a new edge. In order for this to work, you need to apply pressure to the edge with your fingertips while pushing the knife away from you. When you bring the knife back, you release the pressure. Push release, push, release. During the release, the knife is in full contact with the stone, but your fingertips aren't applying pressure. We keep going like this until we get a burr. How long it takes to get a burr depends on how dull your knife is. Here is how to test for a burr. When you swipe your finger like this, you'll feel it getting caught a bit, as if there is something sticking out from the edge. It's way too small for a video camera to see, but here is a diagram of what I imagine it looks like. I have a burr on the back of the knife, but not at the tip. To sharpen the tip, I have to put my fingertips on that area and use a curvy motion. I lift the handle of the knife very slightly as I get to the tip. You'll quickly notice that sharpening the tip is harder than the rest of the blade. I really wish I had a good solution to this, but unfortunately, all I can say is practice. Now I can feel that burr all the way through the edge from tip to heel. This means it's time to work on the other side. On this side, we position the knife perpendicular to the stone because the diagonal position would put our hand in the way. Check your angle and apply pressure when you come toward yourself. Drag, release, drag, release, drag, release. You do this for a while, gradually moving toward the tip. Don't forget that the fingertips that do the dragging need to move too. Keep going like this for several minutes until you get a burr throughout. 
The next step is to remove the burr. This is where you don't want to push. No fingertips on the edge. Just give the knife a few swipes from heel to tip on one side, then on the other side. It's very important to keep the pressure very light. Otherwise, you'll be pushing the burr back and forth. Keep going like this until the burr is almost gone on both sides. Toward the end of this stage, I flip the knife over after each swipe. Let's flip the stone to the 6000 grit side. On this side, it helps to work up a slurry using an agura stone. This little stone came with my king stone. But if you don't have one, don't worry about the slurry. Wet the nagura stone and rub it evenly all over the fine side of your stone until it feels muddy. The process on this side is exactly the same as on the 1000 grit side, but with way less pressure. The goal here is not to cut in an edge, but to clean up the burrs and to smooth things out. If you push too hard, you'll only make the burrs more pronounced. By the end of polishing, my contact with the knife is as soft as a paintbrush touching the painting. Not like a sponge scrubbing a skillet. The basic process of doing the chef's knife is the same, but we'll need to work in sections since the knife is long. Position the knife diagonally with the edge toward you. Find your angle and apply pressure while pushing the knife away. After a few strokes, I move my fingers over to the next section of the edge. And then the next, and the next, until I reach the tip. It's a good idea to check your angle often and to clean your knife frequently. Keep checking your bevel and try to make it look just like the original. On the other side, the knife is perpendicular to the stone and you apply pressure on the drag towards you. Again, we're working in sections from the heel to the tip. It's not a terrible idea to count the strokes for each section to keep things even. Only switch sides when you have a burr throughout the entire edge. Make a few gentle strokes to remove the burr and switch to the fine side. Work up a slurry and repeat the whole thing on the fine side with lighter and lighter pressure. By the way, for the finishing swipes, you might be more comfortable positioning the stone horizontally. Wash and dry the knives when you're done with sharpening and give them a few swipes on a honing rod. The link to my honing video is below. Test the knives for sharpness on a tomato or a piece of newspaper or a magazine. You can also hold it like this. After you use your stone for a while, it won't be completely flat anymore and will need fixing. These days I do it every 6 to 12 months, but when I was learning and spending hours and hours with my stone, I had to flatten out my stone more frequently. You'll need a stone fixer tool for this. It's not very expensive and I wouldn't buy one until you really get into stone sharpening. I've tried several and all of them arrived slightly rough around the edges, but you can rub those edges off on your sidewalk, driveway or some other hard surface. Soak your stone and your stone fixer for 3 to 5 minutes. Then draw a crisscross pattern on your stone with a pencil. Use the flat side of the fixer at an angle to cut in the edges. You don't want any sharp edges. They should all be beveled. Then use the other side of the fixer to rub away the top layer of the stone until the entire grid is gone. Wash the stone and it's ready to use. Flattening the other side works exactly the same way. When you are done using the stone and the fixer, wash them very thoroughly and then let them air dry for at least a day, maybe even longer. If they even slightly damp when you pack them away, they might develop mold. I store my stone wrapped in a towel to make sure that it doesn't get banged up. Here are some more tips that I wish I knew when I was getting started with stone sharpening. Unless you want to make your learning experience truly miserable, it is best to start with a knife that has no 
necks and no missing tips. It's okay for the knife to be extremely dull, but it would be good if the original bevel was still in place and still visible. Removing nicks takes a much coarser stone and an awful lot of time, just because you got a burr on the first side. And then on the second side doesn't mean you have a good edge on both sides. You might need to repeat the sharpening process again and again and again until you get a really sharp edge. All the burr means is that it's time to switch sides. It's totally normal to spend 30 minutes sharpening one knife. When you're learning, you might spend much more than 30 minutes. It really depends on how dull the knife is. So there is no predetermined amount of time or number of strokes that will get you a sharp edge. It does require patience. In the beginning, I was completely obsessed with maintaining the right angle. And I was so worried that if my hand wobbles even a little bit, I'll mess up my knife. Don't worry. Each stroke does almost nothing. So in the end, it all averages out. Yes, ideally your hand wouldn't shake and wobble, but that will happen with practice. The more you practice, the steadier your hand will get. And don't expect perfection. Nobody is perfect. I'm still learning. I don't think I'll ever be as good as the Japanese masters at this. But I feel that I've made a lot of progress over the years and I think that you will too. Pressure is just as important as the angle and that is something that is very hard to show you in the video. In the early days, I had a terrible time removing the burrs from my knife. It felt like I was pushing them from one side to the other because I didn't realize that at that stage, the pressure has to be extremely light. But when you are establishing the edge, you do need to press right at the edge with your fingertips. Pressing with the handle of the knife doesn't really work. When a friend first described the Japanese knife sharpening process to me, he made it sound like it's some sort of bloodbath and only the toughest samurai should attempt this. That is absolutely not true. I've never cut myself sharpening a knife. The most I've gotten was a little nick that didn't even need a band-aid. So don't get scared. I know it looks really scary to put your fingers on the edge, but it does work out. Keep in mind that the edge is pointing at the stone, not at your fingertips. Also, you're pushing the knife with the fingertips. So if they don't move, the knife doesn't move. That being said, stone sharpening works best for people with relatively good manual dexterity. I've noticed that people who have played musical instruments seriously at some point in their life tend to do really well with this and any other knife skills. And it's also very important to be psychologically comfortable with your knife. If you are not yet comfortable honing, it's way too early to consider stone sharpening. I hope you found this video helpful, but I strongly suggest that you watch Corin YouTube channel. Corin is a Japanese knife supplier in New York City and they have an amazing collection of knife sharpening videos on their channel. I'll link to them below this video in the description, so check them out. I had to watch many, many people and practice a lot before I got the hang of this. If you have questions and want to hear back from me, don't forget to start your comment with hashtag real comment. This video was brought to you by viewers like you. If you liked it, click here to support my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell button for notifications. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.